Well, you guys got another video here for you on how to deal with uh, bad sectors on a hard drive. Now, you're going to need some software here, and uh, HDAT2 is a piece of software that you can use to deal with bad sectors. Now, bad sectors are when the sector of that drive has gone bad. It could be one sector or a number of sectors that have gone bad. It also could be a clump of uh, bad sectors on that drive, uh, whether it be at the beginning, at the end. And uh, once you've got a bad sector, Windows can't read or write to that portion of the drive and uh, you can't fix or repair it. All you can do is mark it as bad and Windows will then ignore that part of the drive. Now you can also hide a portion of that uh, drive so it never gets written to and it just stays as a bit of a blank space. So it's like a detour basically on the drive. Now sometimes uh, there has been uh, suggestions that there has been bad sectors that have been sent out with new drives from the factory and they say it's quite normal so what we're going to do is take a look at how we can deal with uh, some bad sectors here so first off you're going to need to download uh, some software here and you can use this on Hiram's boot cd as well uh, but the latest versions and the newest versions are on their website now another big problem that people have with this software is they can't get it to boot and uh, the way you can do that is using freedos and also using the executable file okay so i'm going to open up uh, the rufus so you're going to need to download rufus to create your uh, bootable free dos uh, usb flash drive and go from there so let me just go ahead and uh, open this up so you can see i've got the hdat2.exe on my um, folder here and we're going to use this okay so first off what we're going to need to do here is use rufus Gonna fire up Rufus. There we go. Now I've also got a four gigabyte uh, Kingston Data Traveler drive in here. It's a little small drive uh, that I use for these sort of projects. You can see here disk or ISO image. If you want to do that, you can do, uh, but you won't get it to boot if you use that method, um, and you're going to be stuck in a bit of a loop really. So you want to use FreeDOS uh, for uh, this particular uh, job here. Don't worry about the name. That's going to change. I can change H that, that to there we go and we can leave this as is and then we can start writing to um, this drive so let me just go ahead make sure everything is okay and we're gonna click start and click OK and that's gonna get it ready so remember we've got Freedos MBR and uh, this is the device that we're writing to here and it's FAT32 just let that finish off and uh, once we've done this we should be able to close this off and again we can now get our file which is this file here now remember you have to download the right file from their website and this one on here if you come here you'll see it single programs and it's this one here but you will have to rename it as it says here because when you download it it will be something like hdat2 underscore 64 or something like that okay now once we've got that done all we need to do here is copy this file uh, to our usb flash drive and i can do that here so i'm going to go here and we're going to now put that inside here i'm going to drop it into here not sure if that's going to work now put it in two places just in case there we go so what we're going to do now is boot up to this flash drive and then hopefully uh, we should be able to resolve this problem so let's go ahead and take a look okay so here we are inside the bios here and you're going to need to get into your bios so you can change a vital setting which this software needs to uh, boot properly so you're going to go into your settings and then into advanced so in settings advanced and yours may be in a different location but I'm looking in integrated peripherals here inside here you should see your SATA and eSATA mode here these need to be changed uh, from AHCI mode to IDE mode if you don't have IDE mode you're not going to be able to boot to this um, piece of software okay so it does need to be in IDE mode and that's because 
that's the way the software is set up. They need to obviously update this because this is old, um, but that's the way it's going to work. Once you've got that done, you can put it back afterwards, push F10, and you should be able to save uh, those settings. And then you need to change your boot order. Now you can change it in the BIOS, but because it's just a quick um, boot to the device, I'm only going to change the boot order by tapping F11. So you'll see this screen come up. Yours will tell you what it is. It's just a quick flash. I know it's F11 for me. And now I get the uh, boot device, which I can boot to rather than changing the BIOS boot order. And this is a much more preferable way because it means it's not set in stone and I'm just uh, basically booting to this device once. So we're gonna choose the Kingston Data Traveler, which is the one that we're gonna to boot to. And uh, I'm gonna to boot to this one here by pushing enter. And we should get something like this. So now what we're gonna do is click on the version up the top, push enter. And now you should see here the Freecom version, which is your free DOS basically. And if we type DIR, you will see the directory here. So we need to obviously boot to that HDAT2 and that's what we need to boot to. So we're just gonna, all you need to do here is just type HDAT2 and that's pretty much it. Push enter and it will then load up. Okay, so we are now into where the software is and you can see here we've got some drives here which we can select and uh, I'm going to be going into the uh, two terabyte drive here which is a mechanical drive it tells you the sizes up on the right hand side here the capacity and uh, stuff like that so we can just look down the bottom we also have some other information smart okay uh, and so on so we're just going to go in here now this is where you're going to get a bunch of other tools it does look a bit daunting and uh, if you don't know what you're doing then leave it well alone uh, but basically uh, you can unlock uh, you can see freeze lock on the right hand side it will give you some information in blue set password freeze lock unlock disable password erase unit and so on and you've got some uh, hidden areas menu here also you've got your device configuration overlay and also your set maximum HPA menu now what this is going to do here, let me just quickly show this. I'm not gonna to get too into this, but uh, in your set max address here, basically what you can do is take chunks of that drive and make them hidden. So, um, so the drive won't be usable, that part of the drive which you uh, do new hidden. But you need to know what you're doing. And uh, basically if you add a sec part of bad sectors on that drive, say near three quarters of the drive, you would put in a number to mark out those uh, bad sectors as uh, that part of the drive is not usable. And of course, when you go back and put windows in, uh, they would not bother with that part of the drive. It'd be like a big chunk of space that is hidden and it won't be used, okay? And that's because it's got bad sectors on it. You can do that, but personally, I would prefer to sort of replace the drive. But if you've got a massive drive and you wanna just get rid of, say, 40 gigabytes, of bad sectors on that part you can do. And there may be uh, different areas of the drive that you need to do that too, okay? And there's certain numbers you have to put in into this new hidden area here. Um, but we're not gonna cover that in this video, okay? Because that's quite an in-depth video. But what we're gonna do here is smart. This is your smart area. And this just gives you the information uh, like uh, smart attributes. Gives you all the information about the drive uh, where you can see the spin-up times, uh, read errors, uh, stuff like that. It's a brand new drive, so there's not going to be anything here. Um, power on time, and also uh, seek errors. Uh, you've got your temperatures here. Uh, uncorrectable errors count, and you can see um, we've got a lot of information here which we can use. But this is a brand new drive. It's less than you know a couple of weeks old, so it's not had a lot of use. So what we're going to do here is come out of here and go into the escape again. And there we go. And then you can go up to where it says, if you see here that read file system for MBR, 
we can uh, go into here and you can go into just the MBR or the table. You'll see it here, start to give you that information. Just let that run and it will tell you whether there's bad sectors on there you can see and it will tell you whether there's any issues with that area so I'm just going to come out here come out there we go and go back to device test menu and this is going to detect bad sectors and stuff like that detect and fix bad sectors wipe device menu also powerful test read write and read and renewal of sectors data and stuff like that so you're talking some serious uh, stuff here but basically I just wanted to go through here and this will allow you to detect and verify that you do have bad sectors on that drive which is very useful as you all know so we're just going to go into this one here and we're going to go into detect with verify go there and you can see now it's just going ahead and starting to verify here and this is two terabyte drive here and it's going to take a long time to do and you can see it's done two gigabytes already and the pass rate you can see the information up on the screen here but basically this will take a very fair bit of time to do now down the bottom is where you're going to see uh, where the warnings are for the uh, bad sectors they will come up here and it will locate them here and it will tell you how many you've got and then you can check the log files uh, here it will give you the log file of the information that is found and then this will obviously give you enough information to uh, deal with that drive now personally my personal experience is if you start getting a ton of bad sectors especially at the beginning of the drive and stuff like that um, just replace the drive it, it's just not worth method messing around if that's uh, but if you're into this sort of stuff and you want to try to uh, try things out then get an old drive that you're not uh, using anymore and you can play around with it at your own leisure um, and sort of uh, learn a little bit about how to use this sort of software and how to uh, do stuff but and then if you mess the drive up there's no big deal because it's an old drive try and find an old drive that's got bad sectors and uh, you'll see for yourself how it works you've got blocks and sectors up the top here which is your errors up the top here okay so I'm just going to come out of here because this is a brand new drive and uh, it's quite quick as you can see it's got 20 gigs done already but if modern day uh, drives of today uh, this is only a two terabyte drive it's done one percent while I've been talking so if you've got an eight terabyte drive that's going to take a fair while now normally the smart will tell you whether you've got uh, the drive is dying as well but not always but it's a good starting uh, point as well and this is not this is more of an in-depth sort of piece of software that you can use so let me just come out of here this is version uh, 6.4 which is their latest version here so I'm just going to come out and uh, end this uh, tutorial so I'm just going to push control alt delete here and we're going to go back into the BIOS they could keep pushing your key might be F2 could be delete key whatever key that it is you need uh, to get back into the uh, BIOS here and once you're inside here you can then make your changes so go back go back into advanced integrated peripherals for me and we're going to change this back to the mode that it should be push f10 say yes and that will then hopefully boot back to windows and hopefully that will boot back up and uh, we'll be good to go from there okay so anyway be careful with this software it's a powerful piece of software and it can damage hardware so be very very careful when using this particular type of software because uh, it's not good if you damage uh, your hard drive by messing around with this stuff as I said if you are going to test it then use um, an older type of hard drive uh, where it's, it doesn't mean nothing to you stick it into the machine and test on that drive okay rather than your good stuff but anyway I'm going to wrap this one up my name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk thanks again for watching uh, bye for now. Now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.